Welcome to Men Unplugged with your host, Jeff Jarena. Get ready to plug in and recharge your life as Jeff visits with influential Christian leaders, helping you experience the life you were truly meant to live. Hey, how's it going? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to episode 20 of the Men Unplugged show. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial right now at audibletrial.com forward slash men unplugged. On today's podcast, I'll be wrapping up my conversation with Bodie Hodge with the Supercharge Round. What are some of the best resources out there, other than what you've already shared, that men and families can use to defend their Christian faith? One of my favorites is How Do We Know the Bible is True? It is a book uh, series. There's actually two of them. Powerful set. It answers the question, how do we know the Bible is true? And uh, as well as things like how do we know the resurrection uh, actually occurred? What about miracles? That is a powerful set. We also have a brand new set out, uh, World Religions and Cults. We look at over 60 world religions and cults. And just as a big picture, uh, there's only two religions in the world. That's it, two. God's and not God's. Mm. And if it doesn't come from God, one way or another, it comes through man. That is man's religion or humanistic religions. People have been utilized uh, to take their thoughts, to take people away from God and his word. All other world religions, one way or another, go back to the mind of man being deviated from God and his word. Those are two powerful sets right off the bat, I would highly suggest. Now, didn't you write or co-write that one book, The World Religions and Cults? Yeah, I was one of the lead editors. I wrote some of the chapters in there, but we worked with people from four continents. We had Dr. Ron Rhodes was on there, uh, Dr. Thane Yuri, Ken Ham was on it. I mean, we had we had an all star cast. It was it's an excellent book series. Mm. So, what were the circumstances or the event that led to your faith in Jesus Christ? I was nine years old uh, when I received Christ as Lord, and you know, had been playing on me for quite some time. I realized that I was a sinner and a pastor pastor came out and we chatted and we talked and um, you know what, I understood it a little bit more and uh, you know what, the, the, the Holy Spirit opened me up and uh, uh, I was baptized, uh, I think, on the Sunday following. And uh, you know what, uh, that didn't make me a perfect Christian. I didn't know a whole lot. It probably wasn't until my college years that uh, I really exploded in my faith. I would say I was probably a baby Christian uh, for much of that time, still sucking on milk until I finally got some solid food. So, And you grasped at nine years old, you grasped the concept of grace. I, I mean, I grew up in church, but I didn't get grace, understand it, till mm-hmm. I was 30. That was 16 years ago. Yeah. So you yeah. got it. You got it at nine. See that? I, I got it. I understood it. Um, did that mean I lived it out perfectly? By no means. Well, yeah. my wife was the same way. She was seven years old. So, I yeah. mean, it, for some reason, I just didn't get it. So let me ask this. You talked a little bit earlier how you got into apologetics. Would you say that this is your purpose in life? Well, you know, the Lord probably has raised me up for a number of different purposes. Um, You know, I've got uh, a wife and four wonderful kids, and, uh, you know, they take a big priority in there as well. But you know what? The Lord has been training me to speak and to write uh, on a lot of these subjects. And you know what? I I can't take the credit for it. You know, I have to give it all to the Lord. What were some of the steps that you took, Bodie, or maybe even tools or resources that helped you to really— pinpoint your calling here and really to narrow down into apologetics? You know what? What I did is I I sought the answers that I needed. And uh, that really opened me up. And so, you know, as I continued to teach that uh, throughout my years, it really, uh, I, I think, opened a door for me to be able to teach it at a layman level because I'd worked so much with the kids. Um, you know, being a, being a teacher at a university, you know, it, it taught me to be in front of people. It taught me uh, to be able to to convey things in a teaching method as well, which is one of the things that I tend to do. So, you know, I think there was a number of things that the Lord used to train me to get me to this point. But, uh, you know, once again, you know, it wasn't me saying, hey, I want to go in this direction. It was the Lord opening and shutting doors and putting me here. So mm, and he does do that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. So what is the best advice, Bodie, you've ever received? Oh, my. That's a good question. You want me to, uh, you want to think about it? You want me to come back to it? <laughs> no, well, no, that's, no, it really is. It's a great question. The, question. the problem is there's probably so many great pieces of advice, I don't know where to start. Um, you know, uh, one, one of my favorite theologians is a man named Dr. Greg Bonson. 
And, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, he just listening to a lot of the stuff that he's done. He died, I think, back about 1995. But, you know, some of the advice uh, that he still continues to give in some of his series has, has been powerful to me. And, of course, uh, being mentored by Ken Ham, you know, that has really helped significantly. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I still think the pages of Scripture are uh, the, the best advice I get on a daily basis. Mm, God's Word. You heard it right there, listeners. Hey, I agree with that. So what is a personal habit or discipline that you think attributes to your success? Well, one of the things that I always want to do, and you know, I was taught this, and it, it is absolutely true. When someone makes a claim about God and His Word, go check it. Just look it up. I don't know how often, uh, you know, skeptics will say something about God and his word, and I'll look at them and I'm like, well, that's actually not what the Bible says. Or even Christians will do that. Um, you know, the fact is, there's been times where, you know, I've been raised up to believe a certain thing, and I say, hold on a second, let's go back and see what the Scripture actually says on this subject. The key is go back to Scripture, go back to Scripture, go back to Scripture. That is some of the best advice I can give to anyone. Mm, that's big. Are you ready to stay supercharged? I've got a special offer for you as a Men Unplugged listener. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Men Unplugged to download any one of Audible's 180,000 plus audiobooks for free, along with a free 30-day trial membership. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash Men Unplugged to get your free audiobook today. All right, let's get back to the interview. Outside of the Bible, Bodhi, what is one book that you would recommend and why? I would recommend the book, How Could a Loving God Allow Death and Suffering in the World? Uh, Ken Ham wrote this. Uh, it's actually about his brother. He had a younger brother who was a Baptist pastor in Australia, and uh, he contracted a horrible brain disease. And, you know, it, it kind of took him quickly, but it, it made him suffer for a long time. And uh, one of the last sermons he gave was, how could a loving God allow death and suffering in the world? And uh, it was powerful. How He went back to Genesis and explained, you know, death and suffering as a result of man's sin, and that's all the more reason to receive Christ. But reading through that book, it is powerful. Anybody who's suffering or ever been through a loss, getting this book into their hands is powerful. If you can, share maybe one of your worst moments, and what did you learn from it? Oh, one of my worst moments. Boy, I've got so many to pick from. It's not even funny. <laughs> we all, I know. I, I hate that question sometimes. but You know, it's funny. I, I've got a list of all the ways I almost died. And uh, I actually have over 50 things on that list. And, uh, you know, one of my worst moments uh, was actually more in recent times. You know, my, and Within the last two years, I've had two 100% blockage heart attacks. Whoa. And I've survived those. And that, that, they were my widow maker in the worst part. And, uh, you know, I just remember, you know, at those points, you know, like, you know, it, it, are my eyes going to open when this is done or are they not? Am I going to am I going to be with the Lord? And, uh, you know, it's those times like that that you just say, OK, you know, what? I'm committing everything to the Lord and, uh, you know, watch over my wife, watch over my kids and uh, we'll go from there. And the, uh, in, in the Lord's grace, you know, he brought me through all that and I can continue to be a blessing to my family. So, um, you know what? I, I give the glory to God and all that. Well, praise God, you're here. I did not know that. Is it? What is everything good now? Was it stents or what? What had what had to well, happen? I put stents in, but I, I've got some pretty serious damage in in my heart, so that that slows me down, uh, you know, in a number of respects. But you know what? It's a new norm, and you just live with that and say, you know, the alternative is I can be six feet under and and uh, you know, wait in the final uh, uh, resurrected body, right? So, well, that tells me that he still has some work for you here. Hmm. Bodhi, what are you most fired up about right now that you've got going on? Oh, boy. I've got a number of books that I've been working on, and uh, one of the things that I'm working on is a Dinosaur Answers book. I'm excited about that. Uh, we've also been working on a commentary, uh, Ken Ham and I, on Genesis 1-11. to We've been working on this off and on for years now, and uh, it's just a matter of trying to get the, get the time to get all that done. Bodhi, let's end today on Men Unplugged with one farewell piece of guidance that you can give to all of our listeners and then we'll say goodbye. Well, you know, one thing that I like to just shout out out there is is the gospel itself from a big picture. You know, we've heard the gospel probably many times, but sometimes we don't hear it from this perspective. God is an infinite God. And for even one sin, we deserve an infinite punishment. And throughout the Bible, 
the the Lord sacrificed animals in Genesis chapter 3. Abel did, Noah did, Abraham did, the Israelites did. And that's all pointing to Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate sacrifice. And here's the big picture in it. Jesus Christ's sacrifice was sufficient. Mm -hmm. And here's why. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he is infinite. So the infinite Son of God stepped into history to become a man. And when the infinite Son died on the cross, the infinite Son took the infinite punishment from the infinite Father. And that was enough to satisfy God's wrath upon sin. Amen. And that right there, that opens the door to salvation, the free gift of salvation through the blood of Christ. That is probably the most powerful piece of advice I can give. Um, and you know what? We thank the Lord Jesus for what he did, stepping into history and doing that for us. Amen to that. Bodie, you rock the mic. You really did. <laughs> God bless you, Jeff. Keep up the great work. If you're listening right now and you doubt that your salvation is secure, this can be the day that you know for sure to start the greatest adventure you'll ever experience, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And as I think about what today is, Good Friday, we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Christ paid on the cross 2,000 years ago for each one of us. His work on the cross paid for your and my sins, past, present, and future so that we can have an eternal relationship with Him. That's why it's Good Friday, because it's the good news of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16 tells us that the gospel, which in the original Greek language means good news, is the power of God and to salvation for all those who believe. The greatest part about the good news is that it's free, and all you have to do is receive it. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that he rose from the dead, you'll be saved. Meaning that you're going to be with him in heaven for all eternity. To receive that gift now, simply ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you've done that just now, praise the Lord as your salvation is secure. Hebrews 7.25 says that Jesus is able to save you to the uttermost. That word uttermost means complete in every sense of the word, meaning that you don't have to add anything to it. Now, as I wrap up this episode, I hope that you have a safe and blessed weekend and happy Easter as we celebrate Christ's glorious resurrection. Until next time, stay plugged in and recharged. God bless. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to see at manunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show. Unplugged.